This is a video demonstration of installing Zipper Tubing's PRTS EMI Shielded Heat Shrinkable Tubing product. Uh, there is a detailed uh, installation instruction on the website at zippertubing.com that deals specifically with PRTS. Um, I highly recommend that you download this document uh, and review uh, the instructions and familiarize yourself with it prior to making any installations. It would also be a good idea to download the standard PRT tubing installation instructions from the same website and watch the video of how to work with standard PRT. Standard uh, PRTS is really just a minor modification of the uh, standard PRT product. PRTS has the same PRT jacket on the outside with the adhesive closure uh, strip, but on the inside there is a metalized shielding fabric that's very soft and pliable that's going to provide your EMI shield uh, once installed. The only significant difference between PRTS and PRT in the installation process <coughs> is to wrap the shield cloth around the cable uh, prior, to in, prior to shrinking the tubing. Uh, the other thing that's important when you're installing an EMI shield is that you need to have planned your grounding scheme. You may want to check with your engineering departments uh, as to exactly how you're going to do that. There are numerous ways to do it. Um, PRTS can be had with a drain wire sewn in. This particular sample does not have any uh, drain wire added. Um, here's an example of a, a piece of uh, PRTS that has been cut off and it was already installed but it had the drain wire uh, sewn in and this this option is available. So uh, depending on what your installation criteria are uh, you may or may not want a drain wire. It is also very possible to simply take the shield cloth and go up over the back of an electrical connector to make your ground contact or trim off a little of the excess heat shrink tubing and simply fold the shield back over the outside so you end up with the uh, conductive surface on the outside at the end to uh, accommodate a clamp device or something if you're going to carry the ground that way. Here's an example of another shielded heat shrinkable part from zipper tubing. This happens to be SST tubing, but it has the same metalized shielding fabric inside and a piece of a braid wire was simply helically wound around the cable prior to this material being installed. And you can see the, the bumps that are created and the shrink tubing will interlock with the helical winds of the braid wire and you have good intimate contact of the shield along with the braid. Uh, this is another option if you're dealing with just bulk material but you decide you want to use a braid termination. Um, to, to install this product, as I said, the, the main difference is you need to wrap the material around and, and attach the, uh, the uh, EMI shield. And now unfortunately this sample has been cut off of a, a roll of material and the, it's sat around a long time so it tends to want to curl up. Normally you won't have this problem if you're just taking a pair of scissors and cutting a sample off of a spool. This won't happen for probably a day or so before it tends to do this. But just like with standard PRT tubing, a pair of scissors is all you need to trim the material uh, off, the, off the reel and uh, cut it to your desired length. Uh, to make the installation you install your cable inside the shield. Um, the heat shrinkable tubing will be on the outside, the shield will be facing up and what you want to see is the along the inside edge of the metalized shielding fabric is another strip of adhesive. Uh, now I've already sized this tubing. This cable is roughly three quarters to seven eighths of an inch in diameter and I have already measured it and selected from the, um, looked at the sizing chart 
and uh, know that I need to use a number seven and this sample even has uh, the part number of number seven size on it but what you're going to do is <clears throat> install it face up so that the shields facing you with the cable laying in the shield cloth pull the uh, paper release liner back a little bit off of the metalized shielding fabric and wrap it around the cable and preferably wrap it around as far as you can get it to go just so the adhesive will stick to the cable not the other side of the uh, shield cloth and as you continue to pull it around and stick it to the cable uh, this can be long lengths it doesn't have to be a short length like I have here now once that edge is <clears throat> stuck to the cable we have almost 360 degree shield coverage at the moment when I wrap the rest of it around and start to and I stick the PRT tubing together and start to shrink it this will snail up and the overlap will increase the reason for the adhesive is so this edge can't move and you always ensure that you have full shield coverage um, after you have the shield installed <coughs> excuse me uh, the uh, again you've already decided how you're going to deal with your ground termination um, that's very individualistic it depends on your application and I'm not going to address that here uh, but if I had put a piece of drain wire in I, I would have already done that or the drain wire would be here or we'd be going over a connector or something um, continue to wrap the shrink tubing around uh, the two uh, the cable remove the release liner back about an inch and take the non-adhesive edge of the tubing and just you want to cover just cover all of the adhesive this is exactly the same process that you do with standard PRT and that's why you should definitely be familiar with putting uh, standard PRT together before you start using the shielded version um, it's really not too much too complex but uh, you do have other issues to keep in mind when you're dealing with the shield after you've got it installed the entire length uh, rub the adhesive real well um, now the one thing unlike P standard PRT you cannot orientate the, the tubing at this point because the shield cloth is stuck to the cable so you want it, you would want to plan in advance exactly where you want the overlap seam if that's even an issue um, now exactly in the same fashion with uh, PRT you want to use a <clears throat> a nozzle that will concentrate the heat because you're going to apply the heat strictly to the overlap seam area first so that it shrinks and fully recovers before we shrink the rest of the tubing and in the, in the same uh, manner as standard PRT the material will start to shrink around 90 degrees C but ideally a good shrink temperature is around 120 to 130 degrees C and start back a little bit away from the end and the material will start to coil up this is a real common condition um, and you just continue to put the heat along that overlap seam and as you do that it will begin to lay down and straighten back out with time and you can see that some of the tubing is beginning to shrink also but I haven't put heat in directly anywhere but that overlap seam and I still want to do that so that the inside layer of the uh, PRT tubing is fully shrunk uh, now this is done pretty nice uh, I can even remove this and allow this area to cool slightly um, you do not want just like with standard PRT you don't want to pour too much heat around the entire part while the overlap is hot if you've sized it if you happen to have undersized the tubing it will tend to want to pull apart um, ideally this is not a problem if it's been sized correctly but just in case it's always a good idea to uh, allow that area to cool slightly before you continue on and let's go back and 
start to shrink the rest of the tubing around the part. If the uh, overlap seam lip once appears to lift off, this one is not, uh, you can lightly tap it with your finger. Again, it will be hot, so be careful, but come back and just lightly tap it down as necessary. Um, this one's not lifting off at all. And you do want to continue to apply heat evenly around the uh, parts so that you don't have any cold spots or fish eyes. And this looks pretty good. Now the material is still very hot and because this was sized exactly to the size of the cable um, you won't see too much but there's a little bit of adhesive exposed along this overlap edge. After the part has cooled down um, so that you won't burn yourself by touching it but yet prior to coming back all the way to room temperature what you're going to want to do is go along with your thumb and rub the overlap seam area and this little bit of excess uh, adhesive will ball up and you'll be able to discard it um, and in that fashion you won't have any sticky exposed surface uh, to collect dirt or debris. Uh, and let's see, it's cooling down pretty good. This one is sized so close that it it almost has, I can't roll up any adhesive. Um, to see this, uh, in a, a very good example of this is if you look at, if you view the PR, standard PRT uh, video demonstration, you'll see this a little bit of adhesive being removed. Um, this one looks pretty complete. And now I have a complete 360 degree EMI shield around those cables, along with a uh, good dielectric insulator uh, made out of the uh, heat shrinkable tubing and uh, if this had a drain wire sticking out the end like this sample does I would simply do my uh, drain wire uh, terminal termination attach the ground um, once this comes back to uh, room temperature uh, it will be very very difficult to remove although it can be removed uh, if you do need to come back at a later date and remove this for some reason, uh, for a rework or something, um, you definitely want to come back and reapply heat to the tubing uh, so that the tubing is soft and stretchable. And at that point, you can tear the uh, adhesive split line joint apart mechanically with your fingers. Um, if you try and do that while it's cold, it will be extremely difficult to get back off. Uh, and that concludes uh, PRTS installation.